Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, Adonai is our God, Adonai is one. The Shema, which we just heard in today's reading of Parshat Ba'etchanan, is probably the best known, the most famous verse of the Torah. And for good reason. This credo is the heart of Jewish theology. So we teach it. As a rabbinical student, I'm learning a lot about teaching Torah to adults and also to children. So I'm especially excited and intrigued by the first paragraph of the Shema which I chanted a few minutes ago. We read Moses's instructions, Vishinan tam levanecha. And I want to share a few different translations for this statement. Impress them upon your children. You shall teach them thoroughly to your children. You are to repeat them with your children and you shall rehearse them to your sons. We often think of this phrase as meaning, you shall teach them to your children. But that would imply a different Hebrew verb, limadatem, from lilamed, to teach. But here, we have the verb lishanen, which in biblical Hebrew means to whet or to sharpen, to utter sharp words. This particular PL conjugation has a nuance of incisive teaching. Rashi, the great 11th century French exegete, explains that the word Vishinantam tells us that the Shema should be sharply impressed upon our mouths. Meaning, if someone asks you about it, you should not need to stammer. Rather, you should be able to easily explain. In modern Hebrew, Lishanin means to memorize, to learn by rote. Memorizing, though, learning the Shema by rote, is not the same as setting your intention for saying these words. The rabbis teach us that intention, kavana, is not required during every part of the recitation of the Shema and the associated blessings. In fact, you can sleep through most of it. You have to be awake, though, and kavana is explicitly required when we recite these six words. Kavana, intention, is why we also cover our eyes with our right hand, assuming we are able, so that we block out any visual distractions and we can concentrate on the words of the Shema itself. And clearly, since we've covered our eyes, we have hopefully memorized the six words that make up the Shema. After all, we have had these words impressed upon us through sheer repetition in many forms of Jewish education. We set our intention so that we can proclaim and revere the oneness of God. Proudly, together, we affirm our monotheism and our belief in God. We celebrate this lesson that has been impressed upon us from our teachers, perhaps from our parents, as they themselves fulfilled the mitzvah of Veshinan Tam Levanecha. In the Talmud, Rav Safra teaches in the name of Rabbi Yehoshua ben Hananya, do not read this as Veshinan Tam, but rather as Veshilash Tam, with the root Shalosh, the number three. He is telling us that one must study, review, and study these words again. Rav Safra is not the only rabbi to expound on this in the Talmud. Rav Hamnuna teaches us that as soon as a child learns to speak, his father is obligated to teach him the Shema. I apologize for the gendered patriarchy inherent to the Talmud. This begs the question, why? I especially like an answer given to us by an anonymous scholar from 13th century Spain, who wrote Sefer HaChinuch, a book that describes each of the 613 mitzvot in detail. He wrote, Shoresh mitzvah zoyadua, 
כי זה עיקר אמונת כל בני העולם, והוא העומד החזק של לב כל בן דעת סמוך עליו. The root of this commandment is well known, as it, reciting the Shema, is the foundation of the faith of all people in the world, and it is the strong pillar that every intelligent person relies upon. So perhaps all the people in the world part is overstepping, but Sefer HaChinuch is right to describe the Shema as a pillar, not just for Judaism, but for all Abrahamic religions. This pillar, this inexorable statement affirming our belief in the one God, has been a hallmark of the Jewish people, the core of our faith throughout the ages, in our best times, but also as a beacon in our most challenging times. I want to take a sip of water, then I want to tell you a story. During the Holocaust, some Jews sent their children to live in monasteries that served as makeshift orphanages. Not all of the children were Jewish, and since the monks and nuns were Catholic, the children did not receive any Jewish education while they were there. But there are multiple tales of rabbis who, after the Shoah, went to locate these Jewish children with hopes of reuniting them with their parents, or at least finding Jewish families to take these children in. In 1946, Rabbi Yitzchak Halevi Herzog, the chief Ashkenazi rabbi of Mandatory Palestine, went on a six-month tour of orphanages and monasteries across Europe. In one monastery, where hundreds of children had ridden out the war, the Reverend Mother asked Rabbi Herzog how he would know which of the myriad children were Jewish. Rabbi, Ch rabbi Herzog reassured her, he had an easy way to find out. He had all the children gather in a great room, and he cried out, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Some of the children began shouting, Mama or Papa, upon hearing these words, that they had grown up hearing every morning and night. Many began to weep. They may not have had substantial memories of home, but the words that these Jewish children had learned so early prompted strong responses. Their parents had clearly taken to heart the mitzvah of Veshinan Tam Levanecha. These words of the Shema, even taken out of context, transmit power, not just from parents, but also from the lips of a stranger. Indeed, we must not restrict this mitzvah of teaching only to parents. The Sifte Chachamim, an 18th century commentary, reminds us that a verse just prior to the Shema itself instructs us to teach our children and our children's children. So the word banecha here must not refer to sons, nor to sons and daughters, but to disciples or students. This Shabbat Nachamu, this day of profound comfort, I hope you all find blessing and comfort in the thought or memory of someone who taught you the Shema, this lesson we have all learned with our eyes closed. I also pray for those of you who so desire that you are blessed with the opportunity to inscribe these words, not only on your own hearts, but also upon the hearts of future generations. May the commandment Vishinan Tam Levanecha be a blessing for those who teach and for those who learn and for all Jews, always. Shabbat Shalom.